Hi, my name is Lindsay and I work in the Admissions and Records Office at Central Oregon Community College. And I am here today to share with you um, just some general college information. We call it College 101, it goes over some of your options and we just wanna help you um, understand your choices so you can find the right fit for you. So let's start with what are some of your options? So these are not all of your options by any means, but these are some of the more popular options that we see a lot of students pursuing um, for a career. So the first is an apprenticeship, and we'll talk more about that. And then you have college. So you have community colleges like COCC, and then you have universities as well. So we will go over today what some of those differences are so you understand um, the differences, the similarities, and, and hopefully that helps you figure out what might be, be best for you. So starting with apprenticeship, what is an apprenticeship? So apprenticeship is actually um, hands-on training in a very specific field. And um, you are getting paid from day one and you are also taking classes in addition to what you're learning on the job. Um, so they last between two to five years, depending on the program that you're in. And these are for careers like electrician, um, HVAC, lineman, um, elevator mechanic, and so many more. So these are actually really great professions to get into. And like I said, you get paid from day one. And then as you're in that program longer, you do get paid more. And when you finish the program, um, you are no longer an apprentice, but you are a journeyman. And so you're licensed in that area, which is pretty awesome. Um, these are all managed through BOLI in the state of Oregon, which is the Bureau of Labor Industries. So you can find way more information on their website and research all of the different apprenticeship opportunities opportunities, um, learn more about how you pursue that um, profession and, and what the application process looks like. You do need to be 18 and have your high school diploma or your GED. So that is something to keep in mind while you're in high school. There's not as much that you can do as if you were applying for a college. So for apprenticeship, I just recommend start doing your research and seeing what the process looks like and, and getting all your ducks in a row while you're in high school. And then when you graduate, hopefully you can get going on that application process. So switching gears and looking at college. So if you're thinking college, there's so many options out there. So we're going to look at what are some of the similarities and differences. Um, and just starting with the basic admissions. At a community college like COCC, we are open admissions. So that means everybody that applies is accepted. We don't have specific requirements that you have to meet to get in. And then if you look at a university, um, they are going to have selective admissions, meaning you have to meet certain criteria to get in and not everybody that applies is accepted. So at a public school, I think like Western Oregon, Portland State, um, University of Oregon. Um, they might require the ACT or the SAT. I would encourage you to look at the school that you're interested in. A lot of public universities have gone test optional in this last year, so um, they might not require that you've taken the ACT or SAT, but you want to check on their website. They usually require a certain GPA as well, so usually it's a 3.0, sometimes a 2.75, depending on the school that you're interested in. Um, along with the application, there's going to be some essays that they want to hear from you, um, and they usually require two years of the same foreign language as well as certain core classes, so they want to see that you've made it through a lot of your high school content. So private schools, think Willamette, Linfield, George Fox, and more. Private schools are going to have all of those requirements and then some. So they're going to be even more selective. So usually higher grades um, and they wanna see letters of recommendation and they're going to be harder to get into. So now we talked about the kind of the entrance requirements. What are some of the degree options? What school offers, what kind of degree? So at the community college level, we offer certificates and associate degrees. Certificates are short term um, and they're usually for a very specific pathway. And then there are different types of associates degrees as well that we offer at the community college level. One is what we call applied or career and technical. And so those are um, degrees that allow you to get that degree, graduate and start working. And then we have transfer associates degrees as well. So if you would like to eventually move on to a university, maybe you didn't meet their entrance requirements or maybe you just want to uh, save money and have smaller classes and then move on, you can pursue that transfer degree where you do your, your first and second year courses and then you move on to a university after that. 
And then at the university level, whether it's public or private, they offer bachelor's degrees. So we call them undergraduate degrees. So a bachelor of arts or a bachelor of science. And then they also offer graduate and professional level programs. So if you want to be a lawyer, a doctor, a teacher, um, if you want to be a pharmacist, think of those programs. You're going to need additional training after your bachelor's degree as well. So how long do those actually take? Um, so certificates can take just a few months or up to two years, depending on the certificate that you're going for. And an associate's degree is typically a two-year program if you are taking full-time classes. That being said, you don't have to take full-time classes. You can take more time getting through your degree if you're working full time or if you have more on your plate. You don't have to finish in two years, um, but typically um, associate's degrees are finished in that time frame as a full time student. Um, so for undergraduate degrees at the university level, a lot of people will say a four year degree. Again, um, that's the typical timeline as a full time student, but it could take you longer than four years. And that's totally fine as well. And then graduate and professional level programs, those are going to vary in length depending on the program that you are going for. Um, I think this is important to know because at the community college level, we do not offer undergraduate degrees or graduate level programs, just as a university does not offer a certificate or an associate's degree. So I encourage students to think about, you know, what is your long-term career goal? What kind of education do you need for that career? And then work backwards deciding, okay, based on that, what kind of school is the right fit for me? Do I, um, do I need to go to a, you know, a community college and then can I start working or do I need to then pursue higher level of education and get a bachelor's degree or higher? Um, so that's how I kind of think of it in my head. So these are some of our programs that we offer at COCC. I just wanted to give you an idea of what some of these actually look like. Um, so these will look different at every school. Every school has some unique programs. Um, so I'd encourage you to explore other schools as well. Um, but just to kind of give you an idea, the career and technical programs, these are just a few of the ones we offer at COCC. So again, they are preparing you to enter the workforce so they don't take a lot of time and they don't take a lot of money, which is pretty great. Um, these are programs like automotive, vet tech, nursing, medical assisting, structural fire science, wildland fire science, culinary aviation, um, and many, many more. And so these are great if you're thinking, I don't want to sit in that traditional classroom. I want something that's more hands-on, more engaging. These tend to be more hands-on programs. Then there are also the transfer programs. So if you want to move on to a university, these are programs like uh, history, education, engineering, sociology, art, um, and so many more. So those are programs that you do need to continue on and pursue a higher level degree, um, typically for that industry. So what does a term look like in college? Well, the cool thing is, is you get to lay out your own classes in college. And as I mentioned, you can go um, as quickly as you're able, or you can go slowly through college based on what you've got going on. We define a full-time student as 12 credits, and we measure those credits as how many hours in class per week. So this is just an example schedule. This might look different. For, this would look different for every single student, but you can see a writing 121 class is four credits. So that means four hours of class per week. So if a full-time student is 12 credits, that's only 12 hours of class a week. So it is a lot less than your traditional high school class or high school day, but you do have a lot more to do outside of the classroom, a lot more homework and studying. Um, so like I said, you get to lay out your own schedule. You can do a couple days a week. You can spread it across the whole week. You get to make that work with your schedule and what you've got going on, which is pretty great. So another big difference between the different college options for you is just the cost. Um, starting with the community college, that's going to be the most affordable option for you at COCC for one full year, fall, winter, and spring term, you're looking at about $4,500 or so, and that's 12 credits at full-time enrollment. And if you move to a university, you could take those same classes for that one year, and you're looking at about $10,000, depending on the school that you choose. And then at a private university, you're looking at about $50,000 or so. Again, this might differ a little bit depending on the school that you choose, but private schools are going to be the most expensive. 
One thing I will say though, is these are the sticker prices. Just know that schools have a lot of funding to help you bring that cost down, especially those private schools. They usually can get that cost down to something a little more affordable for students. So if that's your dream school, a private school, don't let that price um, totally scare you away from applying. You can pursue or you know, think about all of these options and then figure out in the end, which one ends up being the right fit for you based on price. So how do you even pay for school? Now that we've talked about how much it costs for your tuition, this piece can feel overwhelming for students, but I just wanna encourage you that there are so many resources out there to make it possible. Um, and these are, these are some of them that we'll talk about. So the FAFSA and the ORSA, hopefully you've heard of these things, these crazy acronyms that we use. The FAFSA is the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. If you are not eligible for the FAFSA, you can look at the ORSA, and that is the Oregon Student Aid Application. So when you file these, which hopefully you will soon if you're a senior, these opened October 1st, when you apply for one of these, this is, might be, um, this would allow you potentially to receive grant money, work study money, and loan money. So grant money is free money that the government is giving you to pay for your college. Grant money is based on income. So some of you might receive some and some of you might not receive grant money. It looks at that FAFSA um, and, and the income that your parents make. Then there's also work study money. So work study money is money that you earn through working on campus. So these are specific um, work study funded jobs on college campuses. If you are not eligible for work study, that's okay. There are still part-time jobs on campus or you could work off campus as well. And then lastly, there are student loans. So the FAFSA or the ORSA, those are how you access those student loans. And loans are there as a resource for you to help pay for school. But just remember that what you borrow, you do have to pay back with interest. So I encourage students to exhaust all those other resources first before tapping into those loans because there is a lot of free money for school if you're willing to work for it. Next, we have Oregon Promise, and this is a state-funded program if you are an Oregonian and you are graduating, graduated from an Oregon high school and going to an Oregon community college. If you have a 2.5 GPA and you have filed your FAFSA or your ORSA and done the Oregon Promise application, you might be eligible to receive some free money to help pay for your tuition. Um, I encourage every Oregon high school student to fill out the Oregon Promise because it's a really easy application and you, your plans potentially could change. Um, you might look at doing like a dual enrollment program. So Oregon Promise, it's better to have it there and have done the application um, than not because it is such an easy one. And hopefully that can help you um, pay for some, some schoolwork at an Oregon community college. And then next we have scholarships. So you've probably heard of scholarships. There are scholarships um, for so many different things. First of all, I would say look at institution scholarships. And what I mean by that is the school that you are applying to, or maybe you're applying to multiple schools. Look at the scholarships that school those schools offer and see which ones you can apply for. I know specifically at COCC, we have a foundation scholarship and we have a merit scholarship. So if you're considering coming our way, I would encourage you to check out our website to learn more about those. Then there's also the OSAC. So OSAC is a state of Oregon scholarship application. It is one application for hundreds of scholarships. So it is really worth your time and effort. Um, and so I'd encourage you to check that out if you are um, a high school student in the state and you can take those scholarships to any school you go to in the state of Oregon, which is awesome. Then there are also local scholarships. So local scholarships are usually managed through your future center or your counselors or college and career center. And I'd encourage you to go connect with them and see what local money is available. Every community usually is incredibly generous for their high school students and they have a lot of scholarships. So there's scholarships that are based on leadership, um, involvement, grades, um, maybe a sport. There's literally something out there for everybody. So it is worth your time and effort um, to see what type of free money you can get through those scholarships because they do add up really quickly and every little bit of money helps for college. So deadlines, this is something that does um, differ between a community college and then public and private universities. So I just wanna make sure we touch on this. 
Um, what I mean by deadlines is I mean the application deadlines and um, all of the different deadlines that come with scholarships and declaring a school. So at, a commu at the community college level, um, we don't have the same deadlines that a university would have. You could apply to COCC just a couple of weeks before the term starts. So it is a lot more flexible. We have rolling admissions, so you can kind of apply throughout the year. That being said, I wouldn't encourage you um, to wait that long. I would encourage you to apply early, just as if you were applying to a university. So you have plenty of time to get through the admissions process and not be stressed by all the things you have to do in a short time period. Um, and then for public universities, most of our Oregon public schools have admissions deadlines of February 1st. Um, and then private universities, it's usually February 1st or earlier. So I really encourage you to check out the school's website and make sure you're keeping track of those deadlines. Some out-of-state schools even have uh, deadlines as early as November. So you want to start that process early and just keeping tabs on which schools you're interested in and when you need to get things in by. So Wiki of Residence Hall, this is COCC's on-campus housing. This is really a unique feature for COCC, um, but I just wanted to touch on it because living on campus is such an amazing opportunity while you're in college. Um, this is very unique for a community college. There are only three community colleges out of the 17 in the state of Oregon that offer on-campus housing. So it is not a requirement at the community college level if you're attending one of those three like COCC, but it is a great option. Um, if you decide to attend a university, that is typically a requirement to live on campus for your first year, if not a second year, depending on the school that you're going to. So just keep in mind that this might be a requirement at the school that you are applying to, and you have to factor in the funding for this. So this will add an additional cost to your college tuition price. Um, overall, though, I highly encourage students to live on campus. Uh, there's so many great benefits to it. Not only can you just roll out of bed and walk to your class, but you're more engaged. Students that live on campus tend to graduate sooner um, and, and be more involved. So it's a really cool opportunity. And so what resources are there on campus? These are some of the resources at COCC, but I tell every student this college is what you make of it. So the more you put into it, the more you're going to get back out of it. And wherever you go to school, they're going to have different academic support services for you so you can do better as a student and for us to support you. But they're also gonna have all these fun things for you to do as well. So I really encourage you to get involved wherever you end up going to school and to take advantage of those. Um, at COCC, we have a career center so you can get help with a resume or finding an internship. We have free personal counseling, free tutoring. So you will struggle with your college classes at some point, no matter where you go to school because they're designed to challenge you. Um, there's sports. Most schools have some type of sports, whether it's intramurals or club sports or actual varsity sports. Um, we have a disability services office and most schools will have something like this to provide accommodations for their students to be successful in their class. There's a, um, an amazing resources in the library. Again, you'll find this at every school. There's so many resources in the library from computer labs to the actual librarians there to help you with research papers and more. Um, we have diversity and inclusion programs. We have student government. So those are all great ways to get involved on campus and get to know people. And um, I always tell students to think about college. The end goal is to get that degree and graduate, of course, but also to get a job after you graduate. And college provides you so many unique opportunities to kind of grow your resume and grow some skills and prepare you to enter the workforce after you graduate. So it's a really safe place to do that and to get involved. And so many, so many of these opportunities that are right at your fingertips, you won't have these again. So take advantage of them, study abroad, um, get a job on campus. That might look different for everybody, but I just would encourage you to, to plug into whatever campus you go to in some way. 
So what should you be doing now? I don't know if you're a junior or if you're a senior um, or maybe even younger, but first of all, I would encourage you to get involved. Just like I encourage students to get involved in college, I encourage students to get involved in high school too. A lot of scholarships and a lot of schools will look at involvement. So that might be a sport, that might be a club, that might be volunteering in your community. If you haven't been doing that, I would encourage you to find something that you're passionate about and also start tracking that. Um, that kind of goes along with get organized, start tracking, you know, what you're involved with and what you're learning from, how many hours you're doing that. That will help save you a lot of time your senior year when you're applying for those scholarships. Um, also start researching your options, start kind of making notes of what schools you're interested in, keep track of their deadlines, keep track of what you need to apply to those schools um, and, and when everything closes. Um, and use your resources too. We, there are so many people here to support you from actual um, admission staff at all the schools. We are more than happy to help you to your counselors, your future centers, your career centers. Take advantage of everything around you. We're here to help you um, and just reach out and ask questions. And we want the best for you as well. So we are more than happy to, to connect with you. Also, I encourage students to prioritize what's important to you. Um, I think it's really easy to get caught up in what your friends are doing, but it's also super important for you to sit down on your own and make a list of what are your highest priorities when it comes to choosing a school or an apprenticeship and a career. Um, when you're, if you're looking at a school, is it the cost? Is it the location? Is it school size? Is it a specific academic program that's really unique that you're looking for? So when you start shaping that list, that will kind of help guide you as you choose your school and remember what's a priority to you. Um, and lastly, I just encourage you to visit the college campuses that you're interested in. Um, every school has a different feel and a different vibe and there are great things about every school and you won't know if it's the right fit for you or not until you actually take a tour. And most of the time those are led by staff members and students. So it's a great way to ask another student, hey, what's it like being a real student here? And what brought you here? Um, and you get to, to really feel that campus culture when you take a guided tour. So I know right now, those probably aren't happening at the same level as, um, as they were pre-COVID, but jump online and see if you can do online virtual tours. Some schools are doing safely uh, distanced campus tours. So um, just check out what each school is offering. And I, I hope that helps you. Um, it's my best piece of advice. You just have to check it out if you're able to get there. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that's helpful as you are really figuring out what the next step is for you after high school and what might be a good fit for you. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. We're here to help you. Um, and I hope you have a great rest of your year. Thank you.